So codependency, interdependency, it feels like there can easily be a fine line that you can't always see just by action alone. Like yeah. you know, there's a lot of heart stuff in there too. How do you begin to, I don't know, like what are some signs or some things that someone might be codependent, not in interdependent? Mm -hmm. what, what does that look like to even begin to diagnose in your own heart? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I probably should have done more homework on <laughs> what that means uh, from a counseling perspective, uh, because honestly, this is like codependency is not a specialty that I've worked with, mm -hmm. um, but I have I have worked with it some, and, and there are people in my life who've um, struggled with this. I think one of the indicators is um, when I sacrifice my okayness to try to like bandage yours. Mm. Um, and and it's usually not effective. Mm. So that's that's another thing that there's like it, it's there's a cyclical dysfunction to it where um, it, it's not a one time thing because there's a there's a one time like intervention a gesture of love gesture of compassion that's different than mm. uh, this person is is always kind of requiring this this relationship yeah. is always requiring my sacrifice and there's there's a lack of like mutuality or reciprocity in that um it, it almost can feel parasitic the challenging thing with someone who struggles with codependency is you don't always recognize it mm -hmm. um it, you don't always recognize that that's what's ha what's happening but i think when you walk away from a relationship continually feeling drained or continually continually questioning yourself or your mm. value that might be a struggle uh, an indication that you're struggling with this um, that being said I don't think that that means this is where the the biblical wisdom contrasts from the worldly wisdom okay uh, or I say wisdom in quotes with worldly yes, wisdom yes. right uh, <laughs> worldly advice uh, the world would look at that and go well if if you're con consistently walking away from this relationship feeling drained, uh, get out of that relationship, right? Yeah. Uh, but the Bible isn't necessarily that way. Like uh, God talks a lot. Jesus talks a lot, even right before he's crucified, mm. about how highly he values unity. Like right before he's crucified, these are his like deathbed <laughs> words. Uh -huh. And Jesus is praying that the church would be one that you, it, it, uh, in the way that you and I are one, talking about God, like, so he wants us to experience this like Trinitarian unity, which is pretty mind baffling mm -hmm. um, within the body of Christ. And so he wants us to be in relationship mm. and there's no qualifiers to that. He doesn't say, unless it's a codependent relationship <laughs> yeah. or unless, you know, oh, you feel goodness. taken advantage of or, or things like that. Um, so it's so difficult to navigate this stuff because um, sometimes there is sin involved mm -hmm or abuse right uh and mm. and we go okay well how do we navigate that uh, that's probably a whole separate podcast mm -hmm. um uh -huh. but i would just say like uh the advice in matthew 18 about how to address when somebody sins against you yes. is a great um w place to go for that mm -hmm. i would say if there's a question of abuse like that might be a place to get a professional involved or a pastor or somebody who can speak uh wisdom and, and help you walk through that but it's i would just say it's not as sim as simple as uh cutting people off or ending the relationship mm. because number one that that breaks relationship and we are created for relationship yeah um number two it doesn't address the underlying tendency to have codependent behaviors mm -hmm. uh, so those behaviors need to be uh addressed and sometimes that can happen in a relationship that was formerly codependent mm. um, it takes two people it's yeah. difficult yeah um but but that's I, again. I think the ideal is that we have that reconciliation and restoration of what that I, that relationship would look like if it were really healthy. Mm. Yeah, thank you for kind of describing the tension of it. Especially, I think the pitfalls on both sides of the spectrum. Because yeah. <clears throat> it, you spoke to this a little bit in our last episode. Um, just I don't know when we talk about this, even even reducing it down to saying here's the lie and here's the truth, it can sometimes mm -hmm. feel like this simple intellectual journey. Yeah. And um, we are so wired to like want formulas mm -hmm. for health and for solutions and things. And so uh, we do this all the time in the church where we try to take scripture and like, here's the exact thing to do. Here's the formula. Mm -hmm. 
And there's just more of a tension to that. And so I yeah. think holding that that intention to one to recognize, I think that's a starting point, recognizing the pitfalls of no, your health and well being is not based on other people. Like mm -hmm. you are a different separate person. Yep. And there is health in having that kind of se separation. Mm -hmm. And also you need people. <laughs> like yeah. You're not separate from them. You can't go on this other side mm -hmm. of um just like, yeah, it's not working for me. I'm gonna cut it off. I mean, the like the whole New Testament's written to just the mess messiness of relationship yeah. and forging that in community um, together. So I th it starts starts there. It's really kind of living in that tension. Mm -hmm. And again, that comes back to many other things. We'll talk, you know, maybe more practically some of the practices here in just a, a moment. Um, I, I think that as you try to walk that path uh, toward like in a healthy way of not codependency, um, what are what are just some practical steps that someone can take uh, to stop relying on the, their well-being being based on the well-being of others. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've kind of spoken to this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Anything that just begins to get more on the practical practical side. And again, yeah. recognizing some of that starts with just uh, the knowledge of this, starting with like recognizing it's not just simple. It's not just knowing that these certain things. Yeah. There's pitfalls on both sides. How do we be begin to kind of I mean, really what we spoke to last time, renewing our mind in yeah. this, um, practicing like new patterns, even mm -hmm. the way we think and the way we relate. Yeah, it's so good. Um, I think that there's there's so much we could say about this and, and strategies and practical things that we can do to help with this. Um, but I think the underlying assumption uh, of my value can be incredibly helpful. Hmm. Um, when we realize that, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, deeply loved, personally known mm. by the creator of the universe who fabricated existence around our relationship with him and our ability to engage and all of that stuff. Um, it is powerful. It's powerful to embrace that um, and to realize that like, I am created to be loved and to love. Um, mm. and, and so if I'm like, suffering if i'm not okay like there's a like god wants that for me mm -hmm. right like a, a lot of our our existence is is moving toward a trajectory when we'll finally be in heaven and we'll no longer uh, have any pain or sorrow or any of that stuff yeah, like yes. god wants that for us um and it's okay to want that for ourselves and to move toward that and as we achieve better uh balance mm. and and health and regulatory capacity in ourselves um then we can also love others so you've probably heard the the analogy of like putting your own oxygen mask on first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, right it, when you're on an airplane they they do the safety demonstration they always say secure your own ox oxygen mask yeah. before helping others um there's a lot of value to that analogy and i think it's biblical as well hmm. um that like we we come to jesus before we lead other people to jesus hmm. but as we are discipled and as we mature we also are then able to help other people like discipleship is not this uh you know i'm i'm so far ahead and then i'm like helping these people who are so far behind it's a close process like <laughs> yeah. they had this saying of like uh I, i'm gonna botch this but it's something <laughs> like uh like may may you be following your master so closely that you get the dust yes, of his yes. feet on your sand or something like that yeah, yeah um and so it's this idea like it's very close it's 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 intimate and so i don't i don't have to be way ahead um but knowing that that i'm trying to help others that i'm trying to influence others like there's a level of okayness that i need to shoot for in my own self mm. and that act of self-compassion can also allow me to be more compassionate to other people um yeah, so I think self-care is a big part of it. And with that, uh, there's some basic things that that we can do. Um, and mm. a big part of it is self-talk. Like as I talk with my clients, um, it can almost be a cliche in counseling. Like we hear about self-talk all mm -hmm, the time, mm -hmm. but there's a reason we hear about it all the time. Um, and, and sometimes I think we dishonor ourselves and it can be almost a form of like pride ironically mm. Mm. Uh, or maybe even idolatry to say that i value my estimation of myself yes more highly than i value god's estimation of me yeah when i really reconcile those things and when i really look at what god says about my value 
it's enormous. Mm. And when I walk in those implications, then I, I care for myself. And I do so, so that I can better fight this spiritual battle, so that I can better love other people, so that I can better build the kingdom. Yeah. Like my life is of immense consequence and it's too important to not take care of myself. So uh, that's, I think, a, a premise that kind of underpins the whole thing. When I take care of myself, I'm better able to take care of others. When I'm more regulated, I'm better able to regulate. Yeah. I think those practical strategies of self-care and how I talk about myself and how in line that is with how God talks about me. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are some some practical strategies that can really um, help me to to live this out.